all right? So if you have had toxic shame that literally altered your whole identity, like myself, okay, then you're going to have masks of superficial surface BS that are going to get removed by force as you get, it's almost like as you get closer to 4D, all that fake, all that faux, it just starts to burn away. But it leaves you feeling so vulnerable and like naked. And the reason why is because in order for those things to burn away, you have to re-manifest the shame, re-manifest the guilt, re-manifest the judgments. Okay. So I tried to pick the most horrific judgment I could find. Okay. And this might trigger some of you, but it's okay because I can explain this to you in a way where I'm really good with this shadow and it it absolutely does not affect me, even though I experienced it. Okay. Because I'm not going to pick one that I haven't experienced because that would not be true compassion. The reason why you have experienced the, the exact traumas of your childhood because they matched your exact greatness, by the way. So whatever you experienced matched your gift to the world. Remember how I said nature doesn't make mistakes. There's never an idea of too much dark and not enough light. It's always balanced. Okay. And so again, if you had this big bright light and you were horrifically abused, well, that just means your light is that big. So you can help every single person as an example, if you were a person that was molested, okay, then you heal from that. You're going to understand that in your clients. You're going to have an understanding of that form of abuse that someone who's not been touched isn't going to understand. Okay. If you've had neglect in a certain area. You're going to understand that neglect. If you have been over nurtured, you're going to have that understanding. So again, everything that you experienced in childhood works perfectly with your divine purpose on earth and the judgment that you may have for yourself what was taken from you your innocence was taken something like that that's part of your mask it's part of your self-preservation it's part of your hiding it's part of your shame guilt personality because again anytime there was any sort of abuse there's always manipulation and loss of power so someone who's molested is not just molested they lose their power they lose their voice they lose their purity they lose their innocence they lose their childhood i mean talk about loss 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 but let's say i wasn't molested but i lost my father just as big father is god Okay. Father is structure. Father is containment. Father is security. So, okay. My mom was abusive. Right. Okay. So that is nurturing is abusive. So again, we're learning all of these things in childhood that when we come back into our origin state of love, we've got to repurpose and reprogram these frozen dead type of parts of ourselves like saint germain tells us most most inner children that have come in to go through this full circle experience their inner child died at age seven so part of you is literally there and this is why right now if you're experiencing this which i see a lot of you in the mentorships is that you're kind of going towards joy you're you're becoming more brave you're facing your shadows and so it's like you're facing your shame and then you're like reshamed because again, it's like, well, I built this mask to hide shame. Now that I'm not hiding shame anymore, I'm getting shamed. So it's like, what the heck, right? But again, now you stand in the fire of it and you go, you can't shame me. And that's exactly how we have to show up with it. So let's take the worst one that I can think of because it involves a child. Let's take a pedophile. Do you believe right now that you could sit not in a state of your spiritual bypassment, but in a true humanity, could you understand why God created a pedophile? Could you like think, think with that and be like, okay, I get it. I understand why God created that. Because it doesn't really feel like logically it serves a purpose, right? It's not part of the ecosystem. 
It's not like, it's not like, okay, you know, it's kind of like mosquitoes, like what the heck, right? Like, why are you here? It's like, almost like I get flies, they help decomposing, but stealing blood, like what the heck, right? And leaving itchy bumps, but they do, you guys, they do. And so if we can look at everything that you judge, where you go, oh, I can forgive and I can love everything but this then that thing that you cannot love or at least allow, because another definition of love is acceptance and allowing. If you can allow that to be part of your world in the idea of love, then you are going to be on your way to becoming your higher self. Okay. So I'm just going to go into it because, again, to me, it's like, it's like teaching for 13 years. That seems to be the one that people are like, uh-uh, I just, I can't get on board with that. That just, I can't, I'm not asking you to respect them. I'm not asking you to love them. But uh, what I am going to ask for you is to examine your judgments on why you may hate that why it may disgust you, why it may bring up your own pain, okay? And 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 I've worked on this one because not only did I experience it, my one of my children experienced it, okay? And it's like that's your worst fear as a mother, and it's also a big fear of it as your kid, you know? I experienced it on both sides. So the, 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 I would say ladies who are not artistic believe you are not artistic clean up your sexual energy okay so if you believe that you're not an artist clean up your sexual energy and you will be like oh i'm an artist because that is the number one thing that is in the way of you being an expressive artist which you are you're a creator god is if your sexual energy is distorted so if your purity was messed with then you're not going to think you can paint you see, it's like, it's like a funny, it's a funny thing. The more logical you get, because your sacral is where your sexuality is, your sensuality and your ability to co-create, make music, all those kind of things. Now, some people go heavily into the music to hide the abuse. So there are extremes. Remember, there's perpetrator and victim on both sides of ego. So let me explain to you the way God sees a pedophile. OK, again, because there's no judgment in his creation and he doesn't make mistakes. It's no different than a snake arousing a mouse to make it taste better. Or an eagle dropping into the ocean and snatching a fish that someone created that fish. That fish had a life. But see, we look at that and we go, well, that's nature. Right. And we say, well, you know, the fish knew that it might be somebody's food or or my son out with a, de a deliberate hook with no intention other than fun to end a fish's life. So it's like if we we're going to look at right and wrong and good and evil here, then you have to understand that heaven is where your higher self is right now. It is a vibrational state of being. It is, it is the energy where your spirit currently is residing. It is heaven. Now, the third dimensional reality is the inversion of heaven. It is the opposite. So it's almost like in Stranger Things, it's the upside down world, right? So it's like it is the opposite of heaven. And so... God gets to be God in hell. So it's like, okay, if I am God and I know that I am God, then let me go into my exact opposite expression so that I can remember to be God. Now, it all plays double spectrum for the ones who are saying, okay, I guess I'll be a pedophile in this life, which you probably all have been at some point, because in order for you to get to reach true enlightenment, you have to play every single part. Just like if you look at really, really talented coaches, they've played multiple places on the team in order to have mastery as the pitcher, as the catcher, as the batter, you know, and then they can be the coach, 
And so for those of you who are working yourself back to ascension, don't ever think for a moment that you haven't played your extreme opposite because it is fun for you as a spirit to realize that you can't hurt a child, that you can't hurt anything. You know, the last time you were in a car accident, did you actually cry over your car's pain or were you pissed it was going to cost money? Okay, so your spirit looks at the body the same way you may look at your car. It isn't attached at all. Now, unfortunately and fortunately, whatever we don't fully actualize, realize, and process through these experiences begin to chase us like a shadow. And let's say I never processed my pedophilia years, who knows when they were, you know, probably had them. I mean, if you had have any vampire energy, or if you've had any Illuminati lifetimes, you've been a pedophile. Because that's part of the indoctrination is sexual aberration. Our society teaches you to be sexually aberrated. Because our third dimensional reality is the induction for evil. So at a young age, you are shamed into submission. You are programmed into guilt. You are separated from God. You are sexually aberrated. This is all normal in our society, even with loving homes. Okay? Because in order for God to have a challenge, it has to be in its direct opposite expression. That's why it's like Superman would not enjoy just battling some two-bit criminal. Or Michael Jordan doesn't want to play a kindergartner basketball guy. It's like you're here to be the extreme of the extreme. And that is the only thing that is fun. Like your favorite time to eat is when you're hungry. Your favorite time to sleep is when you're exhausted. So you are here for that crazy contrast. Okay. And I, you know, Abraham Hicks, like drilled this into you guys like 10, 15 years ago. Contrast. You came for the contrast. But if you don't understand that for you to have no judgment for a pedophile is to understand the purpose of its potential. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys right now that I would not care as much about you guys if I didn't go through that as a child. I would not have compassion for you if I didn't experience that. If I didn't have a dad that left, I wouldn't appreciate yours. I wouldn't be a good teacher for you. Right? And this is why men are not good teachers for women in relationships is because they don't understand that women are afraid every day of our life for no reason. <laughs> and I don't mean afraid like terror, but we don't in our biology, we have a terror that just walks with us. What am I going to do if we don't walk across the parking lot the same way men do? Because when men see a challenge or they see a potential opportunity there there is a power that rises within them and when that happens with the woman we decrease in power to get smaller that is just biology okay and so again when you're trying to tell your husband that him not listening to you is making you unfeel safe they don't understand that is why women who are connected with women are going to thrive more because there's compassion, there's understanding. Men don't understand what it's like to have a period. You know, I mean, they they do their best to be compassionately aware. They don't understand what it's like to carry a child, to birth a child, because in no way did their body experience anything other than basic empathy for what a woman has gone through. And the same for men. We don't understand certain things about men. They We don't understand their ability to compartmentalize and, and shut certain places down. Because again, all of our ingredients are shared. Like our past, present, future is in one pot. With a man, it's like, that's why they're so quick to say, well, that happened in the past. You're like, that's happening right now, buddy. Because they don't live in that same universe that we live in. And this is why like understanding and taking the time to actually study pedophilia which I would recommend that if it is what your greatest trigger that you are just like hyperventilating as I'm speaking about it, 
dive into it. Because when you actually understand that what creates a pedophile is the same thing that creates a serial killer is trauma. So behind every pedophile was an abused child. Behind every pedophile is a seriously abused child. Now, remember, ego has two personalities, perpetrator or victim. So an abused child who grows up now abuses a child. That's a perpetrator. That's a predator. And humanity is split in prey and predators until you wake up. That's who you are. So if you look at people who are playing the rat race, right? Working 40 hours a week, complaining about their paycheck, their prey. The ones that are employing them, taking more money, not giving them a raise, they're predators. Our system is prey and predators until you wake up. And then when you wake up and you begin to understand nature, the primitive primal nature of what creates a human predator is pain, right? You've heard hurt people hurt people. So if you could look at a pedophile and find the broken child, that's the Christ in you. Okay. If you can say, I just couldn't forgive that, blah, blah, blah. Then you probably haven't forgiven your inner pedophile from 10,000 years ago. Because you will never see anything in your universe that you haven't played the part of or are actively playing out. It's only your movie. It's only your video game. And it's funny because it's like the more you judge something, the more you see it. The more aware you are of it. Right. The more like something you're working on internally, it's like now it's everywhere because it's your reticular activator part of your brain. Your brain's like, oh, you're thinking about this. Here you go. It's like when you're on Facebook and you want a new rug and all of a sudden now all the new rugs are showing up, all the websites. Right. And in that you're like, oh, cool. But if you're working through some trauma and you're working through shame, now your reticular activator is like, does that shame you? Does that shame you? Does that shame you? And you're like, ah, right. And that's why it feels like it's all happening at once. And this is why if you can settle in, right, and go, hold on a second, you know, I'm not a prey and I'm not a predator. So I'm not a victim and I'm not a perpetrator. I am neutral. See, when you can be neutral to, a, a, a you know, a pedophile, when you can be neutral to sex trafficking, when you can be neutral and understand that, that, the universe doesn't live in time and space the way you do. And the enlightenment process ascension is based on pressure, pressurization, which means that the children being born right now were birthed out of desire from the Holocaust. Okay. So it's like you look at desire as pressurized fire, as pressurized potential, so what, what one generation could not achieve, it's like they hand a baton off to the DNA of their, their seed. And then their seed comes up and goes, well, I can do that. And then I can do that. That's how we evolve. So there are certain things that your parents truly wanted for themselves that they see you doing. Okay. And they're like, how is she doing this so effortlessly? And you're like, my life is so hard. But if you looked at their life, right, where they had less light, less photonic energy. The sun was telling different stories at that time. The moon was more intense. Like so many things have happened over the last hundred years to create this pressurization. So hundred years ago, the world was much more enlightened than it is now because we went through a deep pressurization to have a bigger awakening. Ladies who have had a child, that's your, that's your 10, you know, centimeters dilated. That's what 2024 is, is 10 centimeters dilated. And it's like now the contractions and expansions are making space for oneness. But it, what you judge, you are separate from. Okay. So this is why like taking your greatest judgments and unpacking them and seeing where there is unresolved, like where you are unable to love yourself 
or where you are unable to love the mirror of that. Now, like I said, I'm not asking you to fall in love with a pedophile. What I'm saying is, is can you fall in love with that child who was punished, who was hurt, who was abused, who was molested? Okay. Who was shamed into thinking now I have to shame. So I studied so much in like in my early twenties about serial killers and like, like what makes them, they were all attempted abortions. So it's almost like I need to kill because someone tried to kill me. Now, how many of you guys sitting in my class were in your mother's womb and she said, I don't know if I want this kid. Probably most of you, because I know even me, there was a time early on in my first 20 year old pregnancy that I seriously contemplated not. Okay. And I have experienced that. So as a child who is in the womb, who's not hearing everything, but feeling everything as truth. Those of you who have abandonment issues, rejection issues, who knows what you overfelt in your mother's womb. So if you could have compassion for maybe you didn't choose the predator route, but maybe you chose the victim route. Okay. So every person that judges a pedophile is actually just playing the victim role of it. So I'm not playing, I would never do that, but you're playing the opposite. How many times have you abused your inner child? Neglected your inner child? Okay. Uh, put your inner child in a sexual situation that you shouldn't have been in. <laughs> Ladies, come on. You know, it's like, how many times have you let, let your body be abused because that was what everybody does. How many times have you literally taken intentional poison through a drug or food that you knew wasn't good for you? So again, the body becomes the victim of our actions. And so a lot of this reconciliation that we're experiencing right now is to mend the relationship with the body. It is to mend the relationship with the inner child that you have been just as negative to your inner child as a pedophile is to a strange child. But see how it's easy to judge because it's in the awareness. You're seeing that child go into terror and shame. How many times have you put your body through terror and shame intentionally? How many times have you shamed yourself because you weren't perfect? So again, what comes around goes around and whatever you are judging is what your body is experiencing with you as a parent. So when you really sit down and think about that, I told you guys this from the beginning, self-compassion is going to come before self-love, self-understanding, self-acceptance, self-forgiveness. Uh, this is where your timeline is really going to start shifting for you and speeding up because what you are judging in others, you are probably either still doing to yourself or have done to yourself that you haven't reconciled. Because one thing about your body is it's playing the role of the inner child. All right. The inner child, it, it stays stuck about five years old. It's like, it's got the social capability of a five-year-old. That's why when you walk into a room and your body freezes and you don't know why, and you're like, I'm comfortable with these people. Your body's like, I'm not. This is why PTSD is hitting us so hard right now is because the masks are falling off. We're not so addicted to the dopamine as we used to be because it's not working as well. And so now we're starting to feel things that we haven't had to feel in a really long time. And now it's like, who's going to show up for me? So... How many of you are judging your spouse right now because they're not showing up for you? Fail. Okay. You're not showing up for you and they're mirroring that. Okay. How many of your partners are being overly needy right now with you? Okay. Look within. And so that is more about like, where am I vibrating? What is it that I actually need and want? And the thing is, is your, your shame, your guilt, your fear, your humiliation, your resentment all want different things than you do. But if you do not have 
the separation between them to see them objectively, neutrally, then they own you. Okay? Just like your judgments own you. Just like your failures own you. Just like your shortcomings own you. Your diseases own you. Your money problems own you. And we don't want to be owned by this third dimensional reality because we're in this class. If you did, you wouldn't be in this class. So we want to be owned by ourselves. That's what sovereignty is. That's what it is to be a sovereign being, is to be self-owned. Does your body want you? Does it like you? Does it trust you? This is another reason we're teaching the channeling. Because through the channeling, you are going to see how much your spirit loves you. If you've only had that observer, the ego, and the, the spiritual ego, because see, the spiritual ego can play the love game really well. But the spiritual ego's love comes with conditions, okay? It's like, I can only love people that are working on themselves. Condition. <laughs> I can only love people who, you know, believe in God. Condition. You see how none of that is spirit. Spirit's like, I love the pedophile because it pushes us into our God spark. It, it puts us into this pressurization of justice, of us going, this is, a, this is not okay. And us rising up and standing up for the inner child. And so as we do all these things on the stage of the world, we're actually doing it all internally. And you're going to take your power back by basically being consistent to you, right? I'm not getting my needs met. One of my greatest patterns my whole life in 3D, disappointment. Can you relate? Right? Ladies, mm -hmm. right? Disappointment. Because again, we have this, this ability to be so romantic in our expectations that our expectations break our heart. Right. Think of the last relationship you were in that, you know, maybe not this current one, but the one before that where you had really high expectations and you were majorly disappointed. And the reason why is because we live in a model which says I am nothing without this person or without this job or without this money or without this. And therefore, that's disappointing you. The opposite of disappointment is to reappoint. So every time that we're disappointed, what spirit is channeling to you is come home. You're not supposed to be out there. You're supposed to be in here. When I go without, I go within. When I go without, I go within. When I am triggered, I look within. When I am happy, I look within. I want to see what actually makes me happy. Because... Higher self will give you this gift of being able to change your state of being no matter what is happening, which means that you could actually be out in the world and they're arresting a pedophile and you will be able to see that person as the wounded inner child and therefore in that moment, heal that child. So let me show you how this higher self thing works. If I'm up against, like, let's say I go out in the world and they're arresting a pedophile. And my ego is playing the observer, which 85, 90% of your day, your ego is playing the observer. And I see that. And my nervous system is appalled and my heart is breaking. And I am seeing the victim of the child there. And I am seeing a horrific, disgusting monster. Then what I am doing is I am making the world worse. Because now what I'm doing is putting my energetic belief system into this field. Now what spirit would do or higher self would do is it would look at the little child who was experiencing that as reconciling karma, as downloading the ability to have compassion for later, to becoming a more loving, understanding, grounded being, and it would see the pedophile as a crying child asking for God. Because when a grown human takes the energy sexually of a child, they are extracting the God from that child. That's what they need. I need God. And this is the only way I can get it. 
So let me ask you this. If everything disappeared and you needed food for your child, would you steal it? I would. <laughs> I'd steal from you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I would. It's the truth. I'd be like, I'll replace it. But I would if it came down to it. And so when you have to understand that the state of being that they're in is that I need God to live, but God doesn't love me. God rejected me. I'm abused. I'm disgusting. So I'll steal it. Remember, it's the predator wants the energy and doesn't care about the human. But in the organic design, then there is no difference between a pedophile and a snake or a pedophile and an eagle or a pedophile and any other predator, because at some point, no matter how you know majestic the lion is, it's still eating a small, helpless little animal for the rest of its survival. And so Mother Nature is set up in this because it is set up in unconditional love and understanding. And everything goes through predator, prey, state of being, including you. But are you being a predator to you? If you feel that you are the prey right now somewhere, then you are being a predator to yourself. If you feel the opposite. So again, in order for you to truly see through the eyes of source, see through the eyes of your higher self, you must understand that everything is perfect and natural in balance. And everything is about reorganizing in a state of alignment. So even though that child that you're looking at going, oh my God, that child's most just molested or that child was you. So when I went through my expansion process in 2009, of course, I went through all kinds of initiations, so many, but I was actually taken in to see that my horrific, narcissistic, abusive mother who gave me to her husbands at times, I found that that was me in another timeline. And I was reconciling my inner child in this life by experiencing what I had done. That's why I don't have the ability to judge you. Because I'm like, you're, you're literally just experiencing what you've done in another timeline. And if you can love this timeline, then you dissolve that timeline. Because there are no victims ever, 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 ever. And remember, I just went to a timeline recently, I've been so many timelines now, where behind the stage, Judas and Jesus are best friends. Because again, they're the extreme. So if you looked at the pedophile, could you love Judas as much as you love Jesus? Because without Judas, there's no Jesus. There's no, there's no resurrection. There's no enlightenment without Judas. So what is your Judas? Who is your Judas in your life? Where are you acting as? And most of you that I'm doing work with right now are experiencing some sort of throat stuff right now because Judas, Judas is the disciple that actually took his own life, hung himself. So we're in that resurrection of the throat chakra right now to, to work through our Judas energy. That's what Saturn return is. So... Who is your Judas to your Jesus? So that's like saying the inner child versus the pedophile. Okay. And now the pedophile lives with such an intense level of shame and guilt that you could never even understand. Like think about a time where you have mommy guilt or pet guilt, pet owner guilt. And then imagine what a pedophile lives with every day. OK, now you may not have compassion for that, but if you have had any form of abuse and then you can think of your if you were going to look at like if God took you up to heaven right now and had you sit next to your body. And looked at all the things that you had done to your body. It would be very similar to a pedophile. And I don't mean like you're sexually raping yourself. I'm saying the idea of raping certain elements of yourself for your own personal gain or need. How many times have you called yourself ugly in the mirror? How many times have you belittled yourself? How many times have you chosen other people over yourself? Rejection and abandonment. So when, when God says that everything is I, 
That means the flipped version, the inverted version, and the, the healed version is the same idea. Okay, so if you want to know who your who your predator is, that's going to be your moon. Look up your dark side of your moon. We've done this several times in different master classes, but again, it's interesting to see and study. Like if you are one of these, like, uh, and I don't think there's too many in this class, but if you're real focused on you know wearing your positive glasses all the time and you haven't looked at any of your own shadow, then you might go, oh, no, this doesn't really resonate. But if you look at what you're attracting right now, do you constantly feel like the predator or the prey? And then looking at it through this neutral space, okay, finding what your shame and guilt personality is. So shame personality is going to be pride. Guilt personality is going to be perfectionism and people-pleasing, self-sacrificing, sabotage. OK, that's going to be that personality trait that is who you. Oh, that's just who I am. No, nope, that's your shame. OK, where your fear personality is, is where you settle, where you buy into, where your ignorance is, where your codependency is, where your self abuse is, where your self neglect is. So, again, when we turn fear back into courage and we turn grief back into life and love, and we turn shame into confidence, and we turn guilt into worthiness, then even the pedophile has worth. Because what they're doing is, is they're creating awareness of unconditional love. So let's say somebody's like made their whole life work going and rescuing kids from underground tunnels. Okay. That is their expression of unconditional love. God says, Go down and produce fruit. It doesn't say write a best-selling author, be a spiritual teacher. It says go down and produce fruit. So whatever it is that's repressed in you is what you're going to want to do to save the world. So without your backstory, you would have no desire to be of service. <laughs> you, you would not care. You would be like, what do I need to do? I'm perfect. But it is the pain inside of you that produces your service to humanity. And so your negative charge, right? So it's like my son has black hair and I have blonde hair. And we went on a six mile walk and he was dying because he was absorbing all the light, right? He's starting to feel, and I'm just like radiating. It's bouncing off of me. I'm like, what? I don't feel anything because light reflects and shadow absorbs. Okay, so your shadow has absorbed a lot of your light. And so as you start to work with your shadow, all that light's going to come back and it's going to be able to affect the world in such a way that it's going to make sense. So it's like my mom makes sense to me. My dad makes sense to me. My pedophilia days 10,000 years ago or whatever makes sense to me. Because again, it's like, ooh, I want to play every single part in the universe but I can't create wisdom and allowance of knowledge and truth to flow through me until I have actually gone back and reconciling these things. So whatever the worst possible thing that had been done to you in this life, you've done to someone else in another life, or you are currently doing it to yourself somewhere. So this is a way, this, this class is about finding a neutral way to let go of judgment in every area for everything. Because if you're still bitter or you're still like having resentment, then you're not looking at the mirror. And when you can look at the mirror neutrally, then what happens is that's the eye of Christ. So let, let's say this. I look at the story of the pedophile and the inner child. I have grace for the inner child and I send that child unconditional love. And that pedophile, I see the inner child and I send a rocket of unconditional love for that being, that being begins to wake up. If I judge that being, that being stays asleep. You have humanity's hand in your, in your heart. You could look at someone evil and send love and change this whole situation 10 times faster or... I can judge it and keep it exactly how it is. 
And if I judge something, then I am judged by it. So that's why I've been talking so much about judgment, because that is the root cause of all of your suffering right now, is whatever situation won't budge, you're judging. So if you can find a way to look at your worst situation in a neutral, unconditional, you know, negative light balancing act and neutralize it, do some of the alchemy work, you'll start to notice it will break up and it will begin to move back into flow. Because wherever something isn't flow is damaged feminine energy because feminine energy is flow, flow. And so a, a damaged woman is going to be a manipulator. A healed woman is going to be a multiplier. Okay. A damaged masculine is going to build a container around himself and not take care of anybody else, but want all of your energy. And it's going to be very passive. So a man that's healed is going to build a container for a community. It's going to build a container for everyone to expand and, and, grow, and build from. So we got to look within, guys, and say, okay, let me look at what I'm judging. And again, your ego is going to be so fixated on what they're doing. Your ego is going to be so fixated on what has happened, the circumstances. That's going to be the part of you that has to switch observers. Ego's always looking at what someone has done or is doing that you don't like. And higher self says, this is all me. All of it. And I love all of it. I love my shame because then when I'm on stage, I'm going to have compassion for 5,000 people because I felt 5,000 people's shame as a five-year-old. So your ability to hold light is your level of abuse. It is your fertilizer you had received in those first seven years. And it is also the shit that you kept piling up on yourself all these years. It's just making you greater. Ego says it makes you smaller, more damaged, but it doesn't. It has the opposite effect. This is why when we look